Welcome to this short video where we'll be installing Visual Studio Code and setting up MSYS2 to run, compile, and debug C++ programs on Windows. These steps work for both Windows 11 and Windows 10. This video also has a companion article over at Medium. There's a free link to the article in the comments and description. The first thing we're going to do is install Visual Studio Code. If you don't already have this, you can go to code.visualstudio.com slash download. And if you want a user version, you're going to want to click the x64 user install or a system wide version. You can grab this one. I'm just going to grab whatever the default is by clicking the big button. And by default, they gave us the user setup. This installation is really straightforward. Just accepting agreement, keep the defaults for everything and let it ride. And finish and we get to launch here. They have you go through the setup. You can do this if you want to set up your, your environment. For me, the most important thing is select dark, and now we're good. All right, now we have Visual Studio Code open. And for now, I'm going to close this because we need to install msys2 and set up the environment variables, which would require us to reload the terminal anyway. So I'm just going to close VS Code, and now let's go get msys2. msys2 is available for download from msys2.org. There's a link in the description. So we're going to grab the latest version from here. Once it downloads, we're going to run it and just click next. Uh, keep the default installation folder. If you change this folder, make sure you make note of where you install this program because you will need it to update your system variables or environment variables. Again, we can keep all of the default installation options for msys2. Just click through it and allow it to install. While that installs, let's go ahead and grab our command here. It is finished installing. Let's go ahead and run it. From the msys2 terminal, we're going to run pacman capital S ming w dash w64 dash ucrt. Yes, you see it. So we're going to run this command to install GCC. Just say yes to accept the install and allow it to do its thing. Now that GCC is installed, we can install GDB for debugging. To install GDB for debugging, we want to run this command. We're provided with a lot of options here, but what we're looking for is Ming W W64 X86 64 GDB. So in this case, we want option nine. And again, we'll just say yes to install. And we just give this a minute to complete installation. Okay, now that we've installed GCC and GDB, we are actually done here. We can confirm the installation by typing GCC dash dash version. So we can actually close this and we want to open our environment variables. So the easiest way to get to your environment variables is to go to the start menu and search for path or something like that. You can also search for edit the system environment variables, anything to get you to this menu. From here, we're in the advanced tab of the system properties. We go to environment variables, double click on path or click path and then click edit. And this is where we want to add two new options. And for that, we want to add two items to the path. First, we add msys64 ucrt64 slash bin. Then we also add c colon backslash msys64 backslash mingw64 backslash bin. With these two items added to the environment variable list, just click OK to get out of all of these menus. And then finally, we can go back into VS Code to make sure that everything is working properly. Okay, we are back in VS Code, and let's make sure that we can access GCC and GDB from the Windows terminal. This is just the PowerShell terminal that opens with Visual Studio Code. You can press Control tilde to open it if you don't see it. And then we want GDB, and we have both, so let's go ahead and create a new C++ file. And as soon as we create this file, it's going to ask us if we want to install the recommended extensions for C++. Just say yes, install. And there is this C, C++ extension pack managed by Microsoft. This is the one that you want, and it's installing that. If you were not prompted by default to install this, you can always just go to the extensions area and search for C++ extension pack and find and install this extension pack provided by Microsoft. But now that this is complete, we can go back to our, our program and start making it happen. So let's just do a basic hello world program to demonstrate some of the capabilities. So you can already see that we're getting auto completes for our imports here, or the includes. And you can see that we're getting auto completes for everything we do. So that's a good sign that it's working. And now that we have our program together, we should be able to run it by pressing F5 to run it in debug mode. They give you two options for your debugger, select GDB, 
and then select your configuration. It's gonna be the first option, which is g++.exe, build and debug active file. Now, the first time this thing runs, it's going to open the debug console. We do not need to configure CMake for this workspace. And if we go over to terminal, we'll actually see the output of the program. And that only happens the first time you run the program. Each additional time you run the program, it actually just displays the results in terminal, as you can see here. But we've demonstrated that autocomplete is working. Let's see if some basic error checking is working. We're just gonna to try to include something that doesn't exist and you can see that it's underlining it with an error because this library is not on the path because it doesn't exist. We can see that the autocomplete is working here, but we can also just test it on an object. So we can just create this empty vector and then try to add an item to it by pushing it to the back. And you can see autocomplete for the vector object is actually working. So everything is now working as expected. We have shown how to run using F5 and it runs in debug mode, but the only thing that we haven't shown is how to set breakpoints. So you can set a breakpoint by going over and clicking the red dot next to the line number or from any line number, you just push F9. And then if you push F5 to run your program, it should interrupt the execution and show our breakpoint here. So now we have this vector, it's actually empty, and then we can push an item onto it and we'll step forward with F10. And now we have pushed a single item onto our vector somewhere. There's the first value at the start. But you can see now we are in debug mode and to continue running, we can just push F5 and our program has exited as normal. At this point, we have finished setting up our C++ development environment on Windows using Visual Studio Code and MSYS2. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe and also go over and check out the article on Medium. There's a free link to the article in the description and the comment section. Thanks for watching. See you next time.